two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I got my friend Derek, Dr. Derek Anderson with uh, Health Source Chiropractic here in Minnetonka. How you doing? I'm doing very well, except for the weather that it's, we're having. It is cold. Yeah, your voice is still chopping in and out. There's, we're having some Internet difficulties, but we'll just continue, and you, people will just have to read between the lines. <laughs> Yeah, it, it it gets bitterly cold sometimes, and it's it's kind of like we had we were taking care of my wife's dog, and it's a little bitty Yorkie, and it just didn't like yeah. the cold on its feet. So I get it sometimes. But you said it was gonna the temperature is gonna go up, right? Yeah, that's what it says. Apparently, you know, today they said the high was supposed to be twenty five, and then tomorrow it's supposed to go up to forty or something like that, which would be a nice little unthawing that we'll get hopefully. Well, I'll be going down to Costa Rica probably March, so I'll, I'll bring some back. It'll be warm by then, though, when I get that. Yeah, <laughs> March. Absolutely. Yeah. So today I wanted to talk about exactly that, of how this cold um, has an effect on the uh, skeletal system in chiropractic. I'm assuming that because it's cold, you do this, so it kind of crunches your muscles all up. Yep. Yeah, we see that a lot, especially you know when you have to go out to your car. You start your car and get that started, and then you drive a little bit. Like you know, you, your body will come up like this, and your shoulders tense up. And oh yeah. Up in that cold weather, and uh, so you had to be taxing um, because you know if you you know all of a sudden the, the muscles with the spine in and out of alignment, pressure on the, the nervous system as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Like if you got your spine and your muscles all collapse up, it's gonna it's gonna crunch your spine all up yep. and then that yeah. it gets the opportunity for them vertebrae to kind of jump around and then then when you get back into a warm space and open it up they're out of alignment so you got to bring them back into position oh absolutely i mean it, it's the same way with stress anytime that uh, you, you people get stressed out that's our, our initial response is your, your shoulders start coming up right here your i think we've talked about this in the past like your body doesn't know the difference physical stress, emotional stress, mental stress, and so your body responds the same way with any sort of stressor that's coming into your body, and one of the reasons because your neck is the most vulnerable area, um, the most vulnerable spot in your, your body, um, that's what happens, is so slowly your, your traps start to kind of creep up here to your ears, and then that will start to create issues within your neck and your upper back and start to cause headaches. Yeah, and stress is a sneaky one, too, because it, I think, I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know, but I just uh, assume, <laughs> we're trying to figure things out, that it's sort of that flight or fight response. That's how the stress kind of happens is your body is, is uh, y your system is designed to do that, to protect you from certain things, and it sneaks up on you before you know it. That's why yeah. people have the, I mean, isn't stress like a, one of the number one killers or something like that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it causes so many that go wrong within your body. I mean, high blood pressure, cholesterol, like different things like that is one of the top killers. You know, if maybe not that heart attack is the per thing that kills the person, this is what created the heart attack to, to happen. And yeah, it yeah, sneaks it sneaks up on you. It's a it's very and subtle yeah, little things. Of, yeah, the fight or flight. I mean, it, you know, those that I really like to watch in my free time, I like watching Earth. I think it's a really cool show. Um, watching different animals, but if you notice animals, whenever they attack, you know, their prey, they always go for their neck or the jugular because there's so many veins and arteries, and that's going to kill the, the animal quickest. And um, so what happens is our fight or flight response goes like anytime, like if someone's going to throw a baseball at you, you know, and you're not prepared to catch it, the first thing that you do is this. Like right, that, you flinch up. To, yeah, to protect that area. So that's, that's the stressor, that's the fight or flight response. And so the same thing applies, you know, you know, if it's if it's a bear chase, the same thing, and you're going to protect the most vulnerable area. But at the same time, if your boss is being hard on, to ask you to do this and that, and you have all these, naturally, that's what your body's going to. Yeah, and the and the the alarming part about the stress aspect of it is it happens little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit, so you never get a chance to relax. That's why I think yeah. it's good to meditate once. I don't know. Are you an advocate of meditation? I am. I am. I'm not very good at it. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get better at it, but I try to, I, it, you know, like I usually do about 10 to 20 minutes in the morning where I try to sit and just kind of clear my 
and can do that. That's what it is. A lot of people try to meditate, and that's the problem. Yes. <laughs> it, 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 I try so and then it is. I get it's... even more stressed because I can't relax myself. What I've been learning about it is it's about focusing on something that's like insignificant, like the ticking of a clock or a, yeah. a f the sound of a fan, something that's insignificant that isn't, you're not really thinking about, oh my God, is that fan going to quit? Yeah. I can't remember what book it was that I read it in or, or someone, but the one that I've used that's been the most effective for me is it's the, the thought of like taking ideas and, and, and removing them from your brain. And so like, like anytime when I'm sitting there with this clothes and I'm just trying to, like you said, focus on insignificant things or focus on nothing, um, as that pop or that, that idea pops into my head, thought like, oh, I need to go to the grocery store this morning before I go to work or whatever that is. It's like you mentally just grab it, pick it, and place it out of there so that you don't think of it. And just to have right. those, those 10, 20 minutes of just calming and relaxation before you start your work day, it really does help. And it helps with the, uh, the, um, the emotional and the mental side of uh, your nervous system. I look at it kind of like a, you got a chalkboard or a whiteboard and you just wipe the slate clean every morning and then yep. you can start creating from there. It's sort of an artist's canvas kind of thing. Well, and then, and then just the affirmations. Those are another huge part to my, you know, I just find with most people, you know, every morning, it, it's the first thought, gosh, I have to run the kids over here. Oh my gosh, I have this, I have to do this, I have to, you know, and it's all just that net do this, need to do this, need to do this, where it's like, wake up every morning and you, you know, thank whatever, you, you thank for the health that you have, health that you have, or, or thank the positive things in your life. Gratitude. All of a sudden you, yeah, gratitude. Up in that morning and all of a sudden you're like, all right, you know, I need to do at work, but I got a lot of good stuff going and, and just retraining your brain to start thinking positivity versus always thinking in the, it's a, it's a big factor in the, well, again, um, you know, God, they say that God created time to prevent everything from happening at the same time. <laughs> so you've got your past and your present and your future. So, but our brains, our duality, we're thinking about, okay, what happened in the past that I didn't like, that, that, I, that I regret, and then what am I going to do in the future? So we're never really in that present moment of just peacefulness. And that's uh, basically, to me, that's what the meditation is, is I don't want to think about the past or present. I'm just going to think about the clock ticking. Exactly. Something. Nothing's no, nothing is uh, more apparent than that than with Vikings fans and what they had to go through on Sunday night <laughs> with that game. I mean, we all have those, those the past experiences. And you just got to think, nope, this is a new team. It's every, you know, like new situation. Yeah, I didn't watch much of that stuff. I, I'm not a big football fan. I just uh, yeah. I tuned in a little bit and saw that they were losing, and then I tuned in again and saw that they were winning. And ta da! <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. My brother's got a bumper sticker that says, Go Twins and take the Vikings with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Vike fans. Anyways, I'm going to beam this one up. I appreciate you sharing a little bit right. more about the, 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 would it be the art and science of chiropractic? It's kind of an art, isn't it? It definitely is. Okay, I will beam this up. Thanks again for Wellness Wednesday. Enjoy your day, Derek. Thank you. See ya.